EA Sports coverage of the NFL has us at the Mercedes-Benz Superdome in downtown New Orleans. This is what it looked like just a moment ago in the heart of New Orleans. Folks, there's no place for this noise to go in the Superdome. It is loud, and these fans are ready for football as their Saints get ready to do battle with the Dallas Cowboys. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And he'll bring it a few past the 20 to the 23-yard line. Ready. Yellow lady, yellow lady. 54. Here we are, y'all. Under 10, under 10. Hey, kill, 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 kill. The first carry now, this is Alvin Kamara. So he got free of one tackle, but couldn't do a whole lot else. The tackle by Robert Quinn. Partner, you know I love to point out when teams break tendency and do something a little bit different from the norm. But when you run the ball in the first play of the drive, that's not a tendency breaker at all. That's just trying to establish yourself as you move forward. They'll run, this is Kamara. And they're able to get this one across the 35. 12 yards there and a first down. So after the run by Kamara, now another first and 10. From the shotgun now, here's an inside give. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. It's a loss of a yard there, and it's second down. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll take this one for about four up to the 40. On a second and long, it's really nice to see an offense that has enough confidence to run the football in that situation. I think that goes back to their practice and game planning. They've seen things that they've seen on tape and in previous games that led them to believe that even in a long-distance situation, they can still run the football and gain enough yardage to put themselves in a good spot on third down. It'll be a Saints first down on the pickup of 13. So from Cowboy territory now, here's first and 10 at the 47. Now a handoff here to his running back. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. It's a loss of a yard there. And now second down. On second and 11 now. Breeze. Now he'll dump it underneath to his running back. Complete. And a five-yard gain gets him to the 42. And they're getting him involved early. You feel like they saw something on tape, or they just have a sense with him because he's had a good week of practice or something in that area. But they want him involved, just as you said. They want him to touch it either in the running game or the passing game, but they must like the matchups they're getting. And now before they run this play on fourth and one, we're going to get a break and a timeout. They'll have two remaining as we step aside here in this first quarter. And he has got it from 55 yards away. That was never in doubt. So the opening drive does yield points, maybe not the seven they wanted, but they'll take the three. Accumulating first downs does not go up on the scoreboard, but it does go into the DNA of a team that's trying to establish itself to start a game. That has to feel pretty good for them. They'll take the three. Yeah, they had three first downs and three points. So Prescott and the Cowboys now with a first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. Now the first carry for Ezekiel Elliott. And he's taken down but able to slip across the 35. A gain of 11 to kick off the drive, and it's a quick first down. 
Good push up front and that run in between the tackles. Let's play the leverage game here. Offensive line just got lower than the defensive front, and they were able to get their pads on them and move them backwards and create space for their running back to roam. Now they're going to get about three here out of this first down run, and that'll bring up second and seven. Tackle there by Alex Anzalone. Three nothing after one on EA Sports. The last run got three. Now here's second and seven. Now Prescott going to take a shot for Gallup. Now a clash of bodies here, and it's intercepted. Picked up by Eli Apple, and his guys are going to take over at the 21-yard line. Trying the left side with Kamara. And they're going to stop him right at the line of scrimmage. Just no cutback lane to be found whatsoever. Second and ten. Officially nothing on that last run. They'll try again second and ten. Sammy, Sammy. Easy. Now Breeze. Looking sideline incomplete. Had the right idea there, trying to throw it to the sideline, but he led him just a little bit too much, trying to get it out to his receiver. Ends up falling to the ground, incomplete. An incomplete pass on second down. It muddles things a little bit here. This is third and ten. Open man is Michael Thomas. And he's brought down, getting this one up to about the 35. First grab for Thomas. It's good for a first down as well. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. They run on first down as they're able to get this forward for about four. Tackle made there by Cheetah Bay and Right there, right there, 54 and again this time to the tailback. And this time he's not going anywhere. They'll get him down right at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play there, so they're left with a third down and six. And on third down, the Cowboys bring in an extra defensive back. From the gun, it's Breeze. That's complete to his running back, Kamara. Ten yards, good for his Saints first down. And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. They've become just as critical to the passing attack as a lot of receivers, tight ends, because their ability to make people miss in the open field can really generate big plays for an offense. He was brought down by Malik Collins. Second quarter, two minutes remain. Three-nothing our score. We remind you that coming up at halftime, we'll take you to Orlando and Jonathan Coachman. Coach will have highlights and analysis of this first half, one that's featured no touchdowns as of yet on either side. So his job's a little bit easier for this halftime. Need, the, need to give the coach some highlights here. Yes, we do. The second down play, not much better than the first, just a gain of one there. Now Breeze on third down. He's going to let this one go deep. That's going to be knocked away and incomplete. Certainly looked like they were getting ready to convert there on third down, but what an effort to get his hand on that one. Knock it away and brings up a fourth down decision. Breeze to throw for it on four. And my goodness, this is incomplete. The Saints' decision to go for it backfires. And this defense will take over right near midfield at the 49-yard line. Trying to shake off the interception from the last drive. He'll look to throw. And that is incomplete. He couldn't hold on through the contact. Brings up second down. Well, Charles, if you think so far the early part of the preseason, who has stood out? If you take a peek back at the draft, really the first round is pretty defensively minded, but there were three quarterbacks taken, Connor Murray first, Daniel Jones sixth, Dwayne Haskins 15th. Of those guys, they've looked pretty good. I agree with you, Brandon. When you talk about those three quarterbacks, and you're right, the rest of the draft, we're talking about big linemen, right? We're talking about defensive players, not a lot of skilled players in the first round, but let's take the quarterbacks very quickly. Kyler Murray, by acclamation, went to Arizona. Everyone excited about it. 
and I think his team remains excited about his prospects. They're eager to see him play. He became the starter as soon as he was drafted. Daniel Jones, that was a different situation in New York. The fans weren't real excited about him coming in, but the reason they drafted him has a similar demeanor and talent to Eli Manning, and he's acquitting himself quite not looking for Cooper, and it's intercepted. Picked off by a former first-round pick, Patrick Robinson. And a big return will get him all the way down to the 35. Intended that time for Cooper. So that's back-to-back -back drives where they're throwing an interception. Ordinarily, we look at the offense and say, what's going on with your scheme? Maybe we should look at the defense and just give them a whole lot of credit. They've got them frustrated right now. Well, it's caught on the right side at Smith. Now we'll get a quick timeout called by New Orleans, number two. As the clock will stop with 20 seconds to go in the first half. A first opportunity upcoming in the red zone for the Saints. It's first and 10 from the 12. Bree's going to throw. And he'll go down. Brought down at the 20-yard line. Demarcus Lawrence. Credit him with a sack, and it goes as a loss of six. Now here's a timeout as they're going to get it with eight seconds remaining here in the first half. So on second down, the field goal unit is on here as they try to get three before half. And now a timeout defensively after that first down play. So they're going to make this offense sweat out half number one. And Lutz's kick is good. And they're able to double their lead just before half. It's 6-0. So a late turnover leads to a quick drive, and in turn, that quick drive leads to three points. So someone makes a mistake, but how about the other side learning from that mistake, taking care of the ball, and making sure they put some points on the board. Well done. About set for this next drive by the Cowboys offense. And from this spot in the field with the clock where it's at, you think we're just going to see a knee and that's it? And I think in this situation, that's the proper play. But we do know there's some risk takers out there that may want to take one more shot before the clock runs out. All right, Coach, thank you. And we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. Both teams appear ready for the fight ahead, and we resume action here in quarter number three. This will be taken to the back of the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. The offense now at the line, ready for their next drive. And maybe time for this offense to really hit the reset button. They were shut out in the first half, but still, they're right in this game. They certainly are. What I like about it is that you actually continue. And he's taken down here by the Saints. Marcus Davenport able to take him down. It's a loss of three. So after the sack, they'll come up on a still manageable second and 13. Looking to throw. Prescott. They'll set up the screen to Elliott. And he'll wind up losing yardage here back at the 21-yard line. That backs him up one yard and brings up third down. Now that screen there on second down certainly didn't develop how they had hoped. Is that one they should have even tried, or is that one the quarterback sticks in his pocket? I think the latter. I like what you said there, because trying is one thing. We can second guess just about every call. And he's going to be intercepted a third time. Picked up by Marshawn Lattimore. And his guys are going to take over at their own 48-yard line. Right there. The Saints offense on the field ready to get their drive started. Their defense has pitched the shutout. Now they probably need to deliver a little breathing room, maybe make it a two-score game as they've got it first and ten. A running play on first down, and it turns into a fight just to get back to the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play there. Second down. 0-2-0-2. Throwing on second down. Breeze. He's going to loft one deep left side here. And that's going to be incomplete. Too tough to hold on to that one. It's second down. We saw this a lot in the first half, and it continues. These receivers just not able to get much separation. So that means they have to win the 50-50 balls. They've got to go up with the defender and find a way to start coming down with them. And this time, contact and another incomplete pass. If you're going to blitz, likely going to leave you in man coverage with this guy, and that is less than ideal. It is because just about any offense that has an elite receiver, if you blitz and have him in man coverage, you're going to him, even if he has an elite defender on him, because he usually knows where the ball is before the defender does. 
A good run got seven on first. Here's second and three. Marcus Lawrence in on the tackle. Brandon, all things considered, they have to feel pretty good about getting that type of a gain considering the blitz that they just had against them. On third down, here's Camaro. And he's going to get the first down as they bring him down at the 23. Officially a gain of just a yard there, but they do convert on third and inches. Now a first down carry. It's Camara. And he is met quickly in the backfield. Down he goes, folded like a lawn chair. This will be a two-yard loss on the play. And that'll make it second and 12. A man who's been busy this afternoon, it's Kamara again. And he'll get him inside the 15 down to the 14-yard line. They'll wind up getting 10 back as that sets him up for third down. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. Here's Kamara off the draw. He's not going to get there. That won't even be close. It was blown up in the backfield. Fourth down now after a loss of two. So statistically, both of these offenses have a rough time getting a running game going. But boy, what a nice play there defensively. Tackling him behind the line, but you're right, you look at the numbers. Neither side looks on track in the ground game. Same story continues. He's the only one that scored for them, their kicker, with all the points. So now when we hear the chance of MVP, MVP, they definitely aimed at him because he has been the only guy who's put points on the board in this game. Kickers are always either the hero or the GOAT. So far, he's definitely the hero. So Prescott of the Cowboys now with a first and 10 at their 25-yard line. Buying time to his left. And eventually taken down here. Great coverage downfield. Marcus Davenport able to get in there for his second sack of the afternoon. Another try after the first down sack. Prescott. And that one got tipped. Kind of threw everything off. It brings up third. We've seen these defenses make enough opportunistic plays to keep this one there scoring. Flying around, making plays on the ball. And we see yet another Aaron throw as a result. On third down, it's Prescott. And he hits Jason Witten, the tight end. And they're able to get this one across the 35. First time they've looked his way in this game. He comes through picking up the first. A first down throw for Prescott. And his pass is intercepted for the fourth time today. P.J. Williams with a pick. And he will take this one home. It's a touchdown. That's the story of the game. They've been suffocating all game long on defense. They were suffocating there again in a big way. And they've done it not just by out-athleting them, which is often the case, but by being able to adjust to anything they tried to throw at them and beating them into the punch each and every time. Feeling the pressure here and taken down. A sack back at the seven. I know they didn't tack on the two points, but I liked their attempt. After the interception return for a touchdown, I was thinking to myself, forget kicking it, go for two, and they did. Oh, yeah, and everybody's scrambling. Maybe you catch the defense on their heels. They weren't ready to be out there. Yeah, it's almost like a sudden change, right? Either it's a turnover, you take it away, they stuck it in the end zone, keep the momentum going. Give credit to the defensive guys for rallying and stopping that two-point attempt. So Prescott and the Cowboys now with a first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. Let's it fly deep for Cobb. 
And now here's another interception. Picked off by Eli Apple. And he's able to take this one back to the 36-yard line. Well, down two scores in the fourth quarter. It maybe wasn't quite desperation time, but it was getting close. And that interception there on the deep ball, that probably slams the door on their chances. And maybe that was the thought process, that it wasn't quite desperation time. So now you take the shot before they're going to lay back any farther on defense. Go ahead and throw it downfield. Unfortunately, it didn't work. They run it again with Kamara. And not much there at all. Maybe a yard up to the 43. And this is an absolutely big third down that's been set up here, partner. And there's no other way to put it. The defense has to get a stop here if they have any hopes of winning this game. Astor, you said big third down. I'd put the word big in capital letters here. So it's Saints football as we get your reset. They've got a third down now as they look for one more first down to help salt this one away. Off the play fake to Kamara, it's Breeze. And he finds Cook. And they have the first down with that gain of four yards. That was a route run not just with dexterity, but with intelligence. Found the hole in the zone, made sure the quarterback saw it, and was able to make the short catch and put the down marker back to one. No room to be had there on the first down run as he's lucky to get back to the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. Another running situation on the doorstep as they come up second and ten. On the ground, this is Kamara. And he's going to have to protect the football and take his lumps here at this stage of the game as they stop him behind the line. Now that's a nice play. <laughs> Got me fired up, partner. Ready? But can they do it back-to-back -back plays? All the training that you go through as a defense for these situations, when you have to get the ball back, everything you go through, holding up the runner, raking at the football, getting to the passer, knocking it out of his hands, whatever way, they have to get the ball back. Now can they stand tall again for a huge fourth quarter stop? Bree's going to go on fourth down. That's to his running back, complete. Oh, some strong running. Yeah, he'll be out just a yard or two shy of the 30. That one, a backbreaker as they wind up converting there on fourth. The fourth down run successful. Now they look to pay it off on first down. Running with Camara. Jalen Smith, the Notre Dame man, in on the tackle. Charles, why didn't they just take the knee there? You're asking the question that I'm asking as well because we've seen a lot of football where coaches decide maybe to get a little greedy. I don't know if they're doing it for stats or for what reason. We've seen it happen in college. It happened in the NFL. The miracle of the Meadowlands. All they had to do was take a knee and the game was over. The Giants ran it one more time. Ball popped free. Philadelphia picks it up and wins the game. What year was that? 1978. I think it was in November. So this one, a victory here for New Orleans, and they did it in shutout fashion. Impressive. Would it be too bland of a statement to say they didn't have the...